It's now nearly 5,000 people. That's as hospitals in the United States and across the globe are preparing for an influx of cases. With us now to discuss is the author of The Price We Pay, What Broke American Healthcare and How to Fix It, Dr. Marty McCary, professor of public health at Johns Hopkins University. Thank you for being here. The most immediate question is, U.S. hospitals, we hear these dire predictions that by the end of May, we will be at capacity, even with what Governor Cuomo here in New York said, is we're going to cancel elective surgeries to free up something like 30 percent of hospital beds. Is that that implication in and of itself indicate that the system is broken? Because this is uh, an unexpected, we hope, once in a lifetime kind of a crisis we're living through. Well, our American hospitals have had very little room to take on increased capacity. Most U.S. hospitals function at full capacity or near full capacity. Most ICUs function at full capacity or near full capacity. We only have 100,000 ICU beds in the United States. We could see 200,000 new patients that need critical care, up to 2 million. We're watching what's happening in Italy very closely. China was not transparent. Iran was not transparent, but Italy has been extremely transparent. And what we're seeing there is a hospital system that's entirely overrun, even with the quarantine, which we have not done. So I think we need to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. I want to ask you about testing as well, because that's been a big area of concern that we're just not testing at the pace that we need to be. Um, there is a report today that a new test made by Roche, which is more rapid, has been approved by the FDA. But I don't know what difference that makes if it can't get to people. Where do you think the breakdown has been there? Is it with the CDC? Is it with individual hospitals and health care providers? Where's the bottleneck? Well, the CDC did admit to a mistake in the rollout of this testing. And look, let's face it. They went with the wrong testing system. It was an early decision. It lived deep within the CDC, and they have acknowledged that mistake. Now they are deploying millions of these new tests because everybody who wants to get a test should get it, even though, I should say, the test does not change our, our management as a doctor. If we see you with coronavirus, we treat you the same regardless of that test result. If it's influenza or coronavirus, we give you respiratory support when it's needed. We recommend the same precautions. So it's helpful for tracing and isolating individuals to mitigate the spread, but um, that's where the testing situation stands right now. So don't believe the numbers when you see, even on our Johns Hopkins website, that 1,600 Americans have the virus. No, that means 1,600 got the test, tested positive, there are probably 25 to 50 people who are t who are who have the virus for every one person who's confirmed. So you've just wow. said with that we, we probably have about 50 plus thousand cases in the United States. I just want to reiterate what you just said, right? Oh, I think we have between 50,000 and half a million cases right now walking around in the United States. Look, we've got to abandon this idea that this virus is contained. It is at large and assume it's on every door handle and on every car door and with every handshake. People have got to take this thing seriously. I'm concerned when I hear a, a neighbor or a friend say that they're planning to go to a kid's swim meet in three weeks or that they're going on vacation next week. No, we are about to experience the worst public health epidemic since polio. Kid, and kid, people need to take this seriously. G given the dire nature of what you've just said, is it so outrageous to, to, to consider that cities like New York, cities like Seattle, the rest of the country, that maybe we should be looking at a two week, I don't know how long the period would be, hiatus, and where essentially everything but non-essential work Take a vacation. I mean, I mean, I don't know how you'd pull it off. I don't know how you shut down an economy. But this is essentially what they're trying to do in Italy. Is that what you're saying we need to do? Yes. Stop all non-essential activities. Take every precaution possible. We need our health care workers, our food service workers. We need uh, critical people out there. But otherwise, look, people can work from home. Or if they can't, they should get uh, FMLA or some uh, some care from their employer to make sure that people survive this thing because look it'll take two to three months that's what pan that's how long pandemics last it's how long the Spanish flu lasted in 1918 it's how long SARS lasted it's how long the coronavirus lasted in China and Wuhan 
So uh, we need to do all of those things. We need to close schools. We need to manage our elections and plan accordingly. Look, I asked the NCAA to stop the, the tournament. I love basketball. I don't like it, but we need to do it. Yeah. For two or three months, we need to hunker down. Uh, Dr. McCary, I know that, um, as we mentioned, you've written a book on the price of health care in this country. Obviously, these are extraordinary times, and this is an extraordinary case. So what needs to be done from a financial support perspective for the health care community right now? Because what you're describing is also going to come at great cost. Well, I have written extensively about my deep concern that price gouging and predatory billing in medicine today is eroding the great public trust in the profession. But right now, there's every effort being made at every level, hospitals and the government, to reduce all barriers to testing financially. And as these tests are getting deployed, you're going to see Medicaid cover this, Medicare cover it, insurers are going to kick in, hospitals hopefully will offer it on a compassionate basis. So uh, we need to remove all those barriers. You talk about removing those barriers. We have a, a debate coming up uh, Sunday between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Is this going to be the argument for, dare I say, Medicare for all or some kind of enhanced national health care system? Well, look, we already have complete coverage in the United States for cancer screenings and other essential services. Uh, so I hope this does not become political. <laughs> I think our Medicare system is already running on fumes financially. What we talk about in both election seasons and during natural disasters is massive spending as if there's unlimited money. But we have to remember, if we're creating a long-term health care system, we have to be financially responsible. We already spend 48% of all federal spending on health care in its many hidden forms. I don't think we can increase that to 50, 90, 100 percent and cancel all other national priorities. Dr. Marty McCary, professor of public health at Johns Hopkins University. Thank you.